Hello everyone, Scott Cook here again with another Interstellar Space Program episode, episode 5. This time we're going back to an old favorite. We're going to that tried and true place that uh, every new Kerbal Space player goes to for the first time. We're going back to the Moon. Yeah, we're going to the Moon. And the reason we're going to the Moon is because I have an idea for gen more power generation. I'm going to get into a little bit later. First of all, though, I've just got to launch some space vehicles to do some pulling around. This is a vehicle that's going to haul around some of the other vehicles that are going to the moon for me so we'll just get her up there I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit it's pretty straightforward just a couple of nuclear engines and a couple of docking ports so that it can pull stuff around it's short range but longer range than my last one because my last one uh, ran out of fuel at the nuclear plant and just died there so I'll have to go back and get it at some point I'm gonna need a refueling vehicle first but for now we'll just get this thing into orbit once we get this thing circularized, I'm going to send it to, over to the antimatter factory space station that I've got set up. And it's just basically going to top up its fuel and wait there for the next uh, couple of pieces. First things first, in the moon, I need a space station refueling point, And I'm going to take advantage of the Keythane mod for that. Um, because it's a little simpler and it's a little more straightforward when it comes to getting fuel. But make no mistake, I'm going to start using the Interstellar Pack's uh, fuel refinery options here shortly as well. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to get more into that. For this go around here, I'm just getting myself a circularization and then we'll go to the for rendezvous with the space station. Once we do that, uh, I'm going to launch the first piece of the moon space station. I redesigned it from my antimatter factory because I don't plan on using it to generate power or to uh, generate antimatter. And that means its power requirements are going to be considerably lower. And I'll get into that as soon as it shows up. Anyway, we've got the space station here just coming in for stand-in docking procedure. Um, this little tug without any pull on it actually gets a little wonky because uh, i got really powerful RCS on it. But ultimately, it's ideal for getting the job done. So I'm just using the uh, Navy Fish's uh, plug-in for the docking port alignment. Really handy tool. I've mentioned it several times over because, man, it makes things easier. I was checking on the uh, KSP Interstellar forum and it looks like there's a new version out, uh, 1.0.1 .1 or something like that. Just came out within the last couple of days, uh, so I will be upgrading right away to it. I did a quick test before I recorded this. Obviously, I filmed this before I did. And, uh, you know, it ported over, didn't cause any issues whatsoever, and there's a whole bunch of new parts I'm going to play with. I'm actually debating if I'm going to do a little KSP shorty on some of the new parts because they look really cool. But anyway, yeah, kind of expecting to see going forward from this video some new parts show up in my hangars or show up on my ships, and we'll go from there. But as you can see here, when I was docking, I made the new mistake of uh, forgetting to fly from my docking port. So, And because I crashed into my station, it started rotating a little bit, so I had to arrest that. No big deal, just <laughs> kind of, you know, face pump. Oh, silly me. That's a rookie mistake. Okay, so this is going to be the first piece of my moon space station. It's similar to the antimatter uh, factory, but there's no antimatter containment. I've also set up the docking ports on this to work as a docking collar. And because I've uh, got some interesting vehicles I want to send up to the moon, this is going to work out pretty well, I think. It gives me lots of options. I've also uh, made sure that the launch stage of this vehicle has also got enough power and enough delta V to get this station out to the moon on its, on its own. It's its own self-contained vehicle. It's actually got plenty of Delta V. Should get me there without any problem with fuel to spare, which I can then reutilize later. And we'll get into that as we get closer. This episode, you're going to see a lot of pretty conventional stuff. I didn't have a lot of KSB Interstellar-esque things to do because I was laying the groundwork for it. But we'll get into that. Skipping forward, just finishing the circularization here. Getting her all set up. Now I'm deploying all my re radiators and uh, I had the little notion of doing this interesting circular pattern and I think it turned out really nice. It looks really cool. Different from some of the other ones where the panels just stick straight out. I kind of went overboard on the uh, antimatter factory because I, was I wasn't sure how much heat I would have to uh, uh, deal with. But ultimately I've kind of learned that you don't quite need to go that crazy since, uh, since I started this too. So. Uh, this is only going to have the heat, it doesn't need a lot of heat distribution, however this pattern does look really nice. And I... So once we get the space station set up, it's going to support a couple of other uh, 
power generation options. Now, the space station itself is not going to generate power. In fact, it's just going to be a self-contained unit. I'm only going to put a small nuclear reactor on it. But what I do want to do is be more power into space. Now, with the microwave transceivers, you can do that if you put them into space. But as you've seen with my nuclear generator that I've got right now, getting to it requires a whole mission. Now, I've got an idea for a more or less self-contained autonomous probe that shoots power from the surface of the moon and extracts its own material that it needs to generate said power. I'll get more into that in the next episode because it is pretty much almost entirely interstellar parts. So anyways, we got the second part of the space station here. This is the key thing processor and uh, fuel storage unit. It's also underneath those radiators got a uh, small nuclear power plant to provide juice to this whole unit. Now I've also been uh, experimenting with the last couple of launches in this game with solid boosters. Now you've got the option to limit their thrust and prolong their lives so to speak so that they run longer at a lesser rate and I've been having some success with that uh, as you can see but uh, when I was launching this one I had a bit of a weak spot in the middle and it does actually look a lot worse at 4x speed than it was when I was actually playing the game so don't worry the whole unit held together we got her into space just fine no problem and I even had a little fuel left over now this one is the uh, section that's going to be carried out by that tug I launched first or that uh, pulling ship it's got a little bit of fuel left over, so I'm just going to be transferring some fuel back and forth. Now, there's a small fuel tank in the middle section of this thing. And if you notice, I'm filling it up and then sending it into the big side tanks. And that's a, a little tip for some of you guys that might be new to KSP if you, to keep your fuel balanced if you've got more than one tank to deal with. Uh, ultimately, if your weight gets off-center, it's going to mess with your thrusting and your, your velocities. So... This way I just kind of filled the tank and then emptied in the side, made sure that I had an even number, and if it was any left over, it would fit in that middle tank. I did leave enough fuel in that section to deorbit it, because you, as I'm sure you've heard before, I hate Kessler syndrome. Now that booster stage has been uh, deorbited, I'm just opening up the radiator panels to uh, make sure I don't generate too much heat. And then I'm going to be sending the tug over here, as you can see. Uh, uh, de disembarking from the antimatter factory, pulling back, and then it'll just basically rendezvous. It's fairly close, but I still need to do a little bit of uh, orbital corrections and inclination uh, adjustments to make sure that I get a decent encounter. Alright, once this thing hooks up to the uh, space station piece, then it's going to haul ass out to the moon. Alright, so just getting her lined up. I'm going to skip ahead here to that portion of it because ultimately these maneuvers take a lot of time. There we go, as you can see, I'm just pulling in on it now. Overshot it a hair, but that's fine. Didn't lose too much. Uh, coming in here now. I'm also, on these stations, if you notice, I've got the 3.75 docking ports. I think they came with the KW rocketry pack. They will attach to the 2.5 vanilla ones, which is on the back of this uh, pulling device here. Now, when I'm coming in to line up with the docking port here, this is where the uh, my angle... Uh, adjustments from the Navy Fish mod actually come in really handy. I can get a rotation so that I line up properly and I don't actually send my boosters straight into the fuel tanks. I do have to line it up a little bit so that uh, I'm going to have to take down two of the radiators so that I don't send uh, hot nuclear exhaust into them and potentially blow them off or damage them. Now this station will actually do all the processing of Keythane. If some of you guys have watched my previous series where I was doing a lot of Keythane mining, um, but I dropped a whole bunch of vehicles on the moon to do it, that turned out to be quite tedious for me because a lot of, I had a lot of issues with crashing, maneuvers, stuff like that. So this time I'm actually just going to design it so all the work's done in space and I only have one vehicle that drops down, picks up everything and comes back. Now this is me burning out to the moon. This turned out to be a 10 minute burn because I'm only using the two nuclear engines. And if you're noticing, I'm also burning RCS here. Because I had the ingenious idea, if I dropped weight, it'd be faster. Not to mention the fact that burning RCS like this also uh, sped up my overall burn. It took like three minutes off it. Anyway, skipping back, back here. This is now the Keythane lander that I'm going to use with that station. It's basically set up so that it just drops down, mines the key thing, comes back. That's all I want it to do, and I want to basically keep it 
set up. Now, it doesn't carry a hell of a lot of Delta V, so it's going to have to get uh, get up and refuel in orbit with the antimatter factory, and then it has to refill again at the moon before it goes down just to make sure I have enough Delta V. It's got plenty of thrust, should be able to carry two of those full cans of uh, Keythane back up, and I'm going to let the space station do the processing so that I don't have to carry all these heavy parts in the probes. This does carry a Keythane, uh, a small Keythane um, processor, but that's only in the off chance I don't have enough Delta V and I absolutely have to process some Keythane. Now, uh, we're going to head this thing up to the antimatter factory. From there, it's going to meet up and just fill up. Once that's done, this is actually going to stay here for this episode. I'll send this out to the moon in the next episode because uh, I still need to assemble the space station there. Once that's done as well, that should actually have a little bit of time pass. And now I can check on my nuclear reactor that it, uh, is in my orbit around my planet. If you remember in the last episode, we shut it down so that the reactor could cool off and we could switch the fuel uh, fuels around. We could play around with that a little bit. And that's also going to be kind of interesting going forward because I'm still trying to figure out exactly how all that works. Uh, I got a pretty solid idea, but nothing beats actually just getting your hands dirty and figuring out how it works. I've done a lot of reading on the wiki and stuff like that, and the information is good but sparse in places, and some of the little details are overlooked or things like that. So I'm hoping that as I discover this and share this with the community, it'll help out. Now this is just me just doing a quick test to make sure all of my action groups work uh, for this particular vehicle. And it looks like everything's cool, so now we're going to send a we're going to send it over to the space station. Skipping ahead a little bit here, we're getting close to my rendezvous. I've got to arrest my forward velocity. I'm really looking forward to getting this out to the moon so that it can start handling fuel and we can start pulling fuel back from from the moon and start filling up uh, carbon because getting through the atmosphere sucks generates a lot of delta V or requires a lot of delta V to break orbit get up to orbital speed and then there's usually not much fuel left considering fuel is one of the heaviest things you can do in this game so if we're pulling it from a light body it should uh, should save fuel costs considerably and be much easier overall I thought about doing this with Minmus 2 but I've heard from on the pipe that uh, there's going to be some big changes in the next few updates with the KSP Interstellar uh, supposedly you're going to be able to mine ice there or something to that effect. I know that that's not there just yet, but as soon as it does, maybe that's what I'll save Minmus for. I do want to start sending probes out to some of the other bodies so that we can start testing your atmospheres and seeing what resources are available out there. Alright, so this is docked. Now we're just going to fill her up, get her all set up. Like I said, I didn't carry a lot of Delta V with this Keythane probe because I don't really need it once it gets there. It's just getting there that requires most of it. And uh, filling up monoprop, getting her all finished up. And I'm just going to spend a few seconds here just checking the station, seeing what my levels are at, what my antimatter's at. I noticed that because uh, the station was off kilter, I just realigned it to face outward again. And get my f power back up. Now this is the puller that was pulling the uh, keythane section or the fuel section of my space station are coming in now just to do a circularization burn and I came in with a I think I was 12 clicks off the surface and that was a little I know you could get a really low orbit around the moon like I mean I've seen orbits as low as like 5,000 meters but it still kind of freaks the hell out of me a little bit when I see mountain ranges coming right at me good thing though is there's no atmosphere on the moon to drag me down and slow me down which ultimately is is cool and that's part of the reason why I want to start generating power from here on the surface because microwave power when you send it through an atmosphere is diminished ultimately if you build a bunch of you know reactors and then beam their power straight up from the surface of Kerbin that would work but you're gonna get you're gonna have to absorb a loss I'm not sure exactly how much that might be an interesting experiment in the future but uh, if I'm putting it on the moon there is no atmosphere so therefore I can send that power straight up and it should not you know lose too much efficiency aside from standard efficiency going through space I will need to set up another th relay system around the moon with probes so that I can beam that power back to Kerbin regardless of its orbit so in the next episode I'm probably also going to be taking care of that I'm going to be sending a bunch of probes there now we finally got the two sections close together here just going to kind of rotate these around to 
get them just right. And I've actually designed these probes to go together, or excuse me, these probes, these uh, space station chunks to go together a little easier than my last station. It uh, doesn't require another vehicle to actually fly them together because they can do it all with uh, mono propellant. However, I still gotta drop a few sections and I want to recover the fuel out of the rear section of this uh, space station piece because it's ultimately a fair amount of fuel that would be kind of a shame to waste. And I'm just switching back and forth here. Decoupling and checking fuel. I ultimately, now that I think about it, made a little mistake. I could have probably pulled some fuel out of my little tugger and that would have helped a bit. But Oh well, you live, you learn. That's why I've got the docking ports on that tail section that's going to be ditched is so that my tug could hook up to it and pull fuel out of it when I was done. So I'm just transferring fuel forward. Uh, it's only really monopropellant that the top section will hold here, this section, and then we dump it. And we just pull it away. Gives me some room. There we go. Now I actually just turned on the docking port monitor so I could get an idea of how far away I was from the uh, space station. And uh, then I rotate it around so that it faces the other one. Uh, I really do like the shape of that. That looks cool. I really do. <laughs> Sorry for being annoying, but I, I, I'm kind of proud of that look. So anyways, then we decouple this tug, and if <laughs> it bounced back because the, do the other tug was so close that the docking port kissed the other one off center and just kind of shoved it out of the way. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> I hope it don't mind a little scrape in the paint. Anyway, so then we just set the target. I'm flying in towards it, getting my velocity set up. This unit was a little wonky because of the RCS placement, but ultimately it worked. And then this will be a good staging point for all of my future exploits from the moon. I'm going to heavily utilize the moon for resources right now going forward, just because of its convenience, its closeness, its relative ease to get to. But it's going to be a stepping stone. I do want to start getting into some of the processes that involve atmospheres, like Kerbin's easy enough because you can just launch a plane and use it. And I'll get into some of the SSTOs and things like that that you can make and some of the engine configurations that work really well with the Interstellar mod. Their uh, thermal turbojets actually can run fuelless to a certain extent, and uh, they can also function as dual purpose. They can function as uh, atmospheric engines, and they can also function as... Uh, rocket engines, so they've got that dual purpose that's really useful. Anyway, I'll get more into that a little bit later. As you can see here, we're just coming in, and I have to, again, off-center this attachment just so that those fuel tanks don't block two of the ports, which is uh, which would be a shame, because then I can't use them. Now we're coming in. Nice, solid thud, and we're there. All right, this is the moon station. It's going to be my point here on the moon. We're going to just use it for whatever I need it for. <laughs> and I'm just going to quickly adjust its orbit a little bit. I decided to raise it up to about 22 kilometers because it was a little bit of an elliptical orbit when I was finished. And I did it all using the monopropellant that I had left in it. So don't knock monopropellant. You can get some pretty good thrust out of it. All right. Um, all that time and I found one more panel that needed to be opened. Oh, well. <laughs> So that's what I got for you now. Uh, that's going to be it for this time. Uh, next episode, we're going to get into more interstellar stuff with uh, some interesting engine configurations. So talk to you later. Have a good one.